Hi, my name is Sindhu Charian. I'm currently the president of the International Clinical Cytometry Society, or ICCS, and it's my pleasure to bring you this short video on minimal slash measurable residual disease testing, also known as MRD, in the setting of B lymphoblastic leukemia slash lymphoma. Now, MRD stands for minimal or measurable residual disease. And this is a very important prognostic factor in B lymphoblastic leukemia slash lymphoma. I'll be referring to it in this presentation as MRD. When it comes to morphology, the limit of detection for residual disease is about 5%. So you can tell when there are 5% or greater abnormal blasts present in a marrow with your eyes by morphology. But MRD is assessed using methods including flow cytometry and molecular studies which are not only more sensitive than morphology, but as well more specific, allowing you to separate a regenerating hematocone, for instance, from a leukemic blast, which may give rise to relapse. Now, when it comes to flow cytometry, the detection of MRD generally focuses on understanding normal patterns so you can distinguish from normal a abnormal B lymphoid blast population that may characterize acute leukemia. So a good place to start is by understanding normal B cell maturation. Now, normal B cell maturation takes place in the bone marrow and in the plots on your right, I have a number of different plots which show CD19 positive cells from a normal marrow sample. Our B cells are highlighted in that light blue color, whereas plasma cells are shown in green. Now, on these different plots, we have a number of antigens represented on the Y and X axes that represent different antigens that change in intensity with maturation as a cell progresses from a hematogone, an early B cell precursor, to a mature B cells. And the arrows that I'm about to show you here will follow changes in antigen expression you might expect to see with B cell maturation. Now, under normal circumstances, these patterns are very highly conserved from one patient to the next, from one person to the next. You may see shifts with marrow regeneration, but the overall patterns generally don't change. And so understanding these normal patterns will allow you to pick up a population that's present that's different from normal, a population that doesn't belong, um, and for that reason may represent a neoplastic or leukemic population. So when you understand normal patterns, it's easier to identify the abnormal patterns. Leukemic cells will show these abnormal patterns of antigen expression, and we can detect these by flow cytometry. Now the immunophenotypic abnormalities that characterize our leukemic blasts are going to allow us to separate them from the normal regenerating B cell precursors or hematogones we expect to see in the marrow. But it's important to note that there's not just one way to be abnormal. There are several different categories of abnormality one could see, and they often will fit into one of these three general categories. So first, you might see abnormal intensity of an antigen. You might see increased, decreased, or even absent expression of something normally expressed on a B cell in the marrow. You might see funny patterns of antigen expression, so perhaps co-expression of a very immature antigen with an antigen that suggests maturity. And you might in addition, or alternatively, see uniform expression of an antigen that usually shows quite variable expression. Um, so I have a schematic representation now for you of some abnormal blasts that'll overlie on um, these plots of normal marrow. The leukemic cells that I am going to show you will be represented by red ovals. So if we consider that first plot of CD10 versus CD20, we have an example of a leukemic population which has very bright CD10 expression, a characteristic um, of many cases of B lymphoblastic leukemia, with somewhat uniform CD20 expression compared to the normal background. This blast population also shows very low, maybe even absent uh, expression of CD45 and CD38. In addition, it overexpresses CD58 and it shows very high level expression of CD34 with high and uniform expression of CD9. As you can see, CD9 should be expressed at quite heterogeneous levels, but in this case, it's aberrantly increased and also aberrantly homogeneous. So this strategy of taking a look at your uh, sample, looking to see if you have something that differs from normal, 
uh, and using that to characterize the immunophenotype that's associated with your blast is a good strategy for identifying MRD. And if you read the literature about MID, MRD, you, you'll usually hear about two strategies used, the leukemia-associated immunophenotype approach, where you, at the point of diagnosis, will characterize the immunophenotype of these abnormal cells and look for this abnormal population and follow-up samples. And as well, the difference from normal approach or you're just looking for something that's different from normal. Now, most successful strategies are gonna incorporate both of these approaches. So let's use what we have learned and take a look and see if we can find MRD in a case sample. Okay, so here I have CD19 positive B cells highlighted for you from a patient sample at the top, which was submitted for MRD evaluation. And at the bottom, we have a normal regenerating marrow for comparison. And the question I have for you is, is there MRD present in this sample? I'd like you to take a look at the patient sample, compare it to the normal sample, and make a determination of whether or not you see MRD present. And this might be a good time to pause the video to see, um, to give yourself a chance to look for the abnormal population. So go ahead and pause. Okay, welcome back from your pause. I suspect you have identified something a little funny in this patient sample. In the patient sample, we see some areas that are occupied by cells that are really empty in the normal sample for comparison. Um, so let me just draw your eyes to a couple of different positions on these plots. Highlighted by these purple circles, we have a few positions in the patient sample uh, where the normal sample is relatively empty. Um, and so these are quite concerning for residual disease. We can draw a gate around these populations, highlight these populations, uh, and indeed see that yes, this is an abnormal blast population. And this patient indeed does unfortunately have residual disease present. So they are MRD positive. In this particular case, the abnormal blasts that were present comprised 0.5% of the mononuclear cells. They express CD10 with variable CD20. They had abnormally increased CD13 slash CD33. The level of CD58 was quite high on this blast population. These blasts had uniform CD9 and they had aberrantly decreased CD45 without any expression of CD38. So a very abnormal blast population, we have multiple abnormalities present. It's present at a proportion of 0.5% of the mononuclear cells. And unfortunately, yes, in this case, we have identified minimal residual disease, uh, which will have some prognostic implications for this patient. I hope you've enjoyed this video, which was brought to you by the ICCS, or International Clinical Cytometry Society. We strive to bring our community uh, great resources about clinical flow cytometry, and if you'd like to learn more about ICCS uh, or explore our educational content, we encourage you to come to our website at cytometry.org. You can also follow us at Twitter using the handle at ICCS underscore education. And if you want to learn more about B lymphoblastic leukemia in particular, uh, I have a couple of videos that are highlighted on the left panel um, that you can link to from uh, the, the comments below. All right, thank you very much, and we hope to see you back. Bye.